Hello there, Chris here from Becker's Models. Today I'm going to review the Tacom. Hang on, wait a minute, ammo? I thought this was Tacom. Huh. Anyway, this looks like a really weird Panzer 1 in 116 scale. Hmm, shall we have a look? So what is this? I mean, it's, it is it is a Tacom kit, okay? It's not it's not ammo, but we'll get into that. What this is, this is a rebox, kind of, with a slight retool, if you look at the turret, of Tacom's Panzer I. Uh, this is the uh, Spanish modified breeder. I'll get into uh, what they did to it shortly. Masterfully marketed, that you got to get them for the marketing, by Mig Jimenez of Ammo. And uh, yeah, this the this little tankette was used by the Spanish during their civil war in the late 1930s. And apart from some armor improvements, which the the Germans then um, fixed their Panzer ones, they improvised a mount for this this massive or well, massive <laughs> it's all relative 20 millimeter light anti aircraft gun, the Breda Model 35. And they extended the turret up a bit, and they they made only a handful of these. And uh, yeah, what you get here is you get a, a really interesting version of the first Panzers of World War II. And uh, with some lovely camouflage uh, schemes and some really good weathering opportunities. Perfect for that large, for the 116 scale, which I'll talk about generally why I think 116 works for this sort of thing and why 135th scale is pretty much the worst scale ever invented for armor. So anyway, let's go have a look inside the box. All right, you get this great box. It's about, what, uh, 30 something centimeter? No, it's more than that, Chris. 45 centimeters long. It's not that big. It's it's a little bit, it's not that wide either. Okay, like I said, masterfully marketed. There's all this marketing stuff around here. The the top box is a bit flimsy. Mine can't open. They didn't glue the ends on that well. But anyway, let's just throw that aside. What do you get? You get these lovely instructions. I've had a look at the instructions only and wingnut wings comes to mind. Beautiful glossy instructions. Nice sheet of decals. We get just one little bit of photo etch, which is covered both sides by, with film. We get some copper wire, and then just to give you an idea of the size of this thing, okay, so it fits like all good things that fit in two hands. <laughs> uh, yeah, this this is a good size, okay. Bigger than a Sherman, I would say, in 135th. So you get the the special turret inside there. You get uh, it looks like a big casemate for the top with that sprue. We get the wheels and suspension, very simple. Other parts, look, I'm just going to take this out, more wheels. There's the fender, oh, that's an interesting way of doing it. So the fenders aren't separate, they're done like a, as a as a grid. And pins, so this is an interesting thing. Tracks, even though they come in these, these bags, uh, you've got to cut them off and clean them up. They come with pins, so they're workable. Let me clear this all up and we'll have a look at each sprue and have a look at the detail. Time for a sprue tour. Now, when I review and look at uh, ejection molded plastic, when you're doing sprue tours, it's not just a case of looking at the detail and going, ooh, detail looks good, wow. No, no, no. We need to look at particularly the sprue attachment point, so where the, the parts attach to the, the runners. Don't get me on the on the you know, sprue runner, whatever, where, where the part attaches to the part that you've got to cut away. So if they're nice and small like these are here, that make, that's good. But also, uh, do they make sense where they put them? Because when, when you're removing a part from the sprue, sometimes, you know, it's so hard to get it off, you might damage it. And have they put it on, on a spot that that's hard to remove that nub afterwards? So, like I'm looking at this sprocket wheel here, and they've done a good job. It's in between the two teeth, That's and because the teeth are quite wide on this tank, that should be easy to remove and it's quite small. I mean, that's only about one and a half millimeters uh, wide. So that's good. And then the other thing we look for is ejection pin marks or EPMs. If I flip that over, you can see that there's some here on the, on the inside of this sprocket. There's four there and there's two types of pins. There's the indented ones, which means you have to fill them with putty, which is a shame, but a surface like that's not that hard or ones that are, that are, um, that are raised. So you have to just carve them off with a, and I've just noticed the first problem. Look at that, that's snapped. There you go. Hmm. Not that hard to fix here. What they've used here, this sprue gate they've used is an undercut sprue gate. Tammy uses them quite often. That's to do very fine detail. So, well, that's not too hard to repair, but that's a pain. I must have broken that, taking it out or something. I don't know. All right, let's have a look. 
these are wheels and runners um, and it looks like you've got yeah you've got the word continental on these return rollers here the very good detail you've got some really nice raised raised bolt heads here on the sprockets they look good so far that's not bad the next sprue is the upper hull and we've got this almost call it a casemate for where the the upper hull um, where the turret ring fits and you've got some really nice recessed bolt heads with screw or screw marks I should say and there's already dog hair on this my dog Penny she's over there she's complaining because I haven't taken her for a walk so um <laughs> there's dog hair already on my sprues okay we've got weld detail I'll see if I can zoom in here so there's already welded detail here it's very petite it's very nicely done you can hear me run my stirring stick over that that's really lovely. However, there's not much of a texture. It's super smooth. That would do with some Mr. Surfacer, I think. There's the front piece here. Again, we've got the recessed... Uh, we've got the uh, raised bolt heads, I should say. And it looks like there's some artifacts there of some ejection pin. That's a bit interesting. That should polish out, though. That should be okay. Just going to turn this over. Have a look. Yeah, these hatches... One of the faults of this kit is there's no interior and it looks like the inside of the hatches, if you do want to pose them open, have got ejection pin marks. So they've got this hatch up here has got ejection pin marks, this semicircular one as well. So here's this matrix grid sort of thing I mentioned at the start. It looks like they've what they've molded here, we get some of these parts are molded inside. So you get up with this sort of H structure here with the two fenders, got some lovely texture there on the non-slipped texture on the fenders. And that looks like it just slips on the, on the uh, lower hull. That's really, really well done. We've got raised bolts here, but again, lack of armor texture uh, around there. And this doesn't look, that part doesn't look properly molded. I'll have a look at that. Oh, it's got some flash. They're using extremely tiny ejection pin marks in the corners here. And there are some flash, so you've got to be real careful with that. So even in this scale, some of the details are quite delicate. We'll turn this around, we'll have a look at these other parts here. Got this Really good ribbed ro uh, roses, they're not roses, hoses, ribbed hoses here. Uh, the louvers here aren't too bad, again I have to turn it over. And they're not all the way through, but that's that's sharp enough. So yeah, overall, Tacom, they're getting better with their sprue attachment points. They're getting a bit smaller, that's not too bad with these parts. Um, the wood block here has got no texture, oh, sorry, over here. This has been nicely slide molded with, with the handle on the end, on the end there, but yeah, I'd add some wood grain on that because you can definitely see it at this scale. I'll have to check them. There's some extra parts here that, uh, see those rings again? These ones aren't broken. There might be different wheels for uh, the different types of Panzer, two, uh, Panzer ones here, so just have to double check that. But yeah, the, the details look really good. The leaf springs look really nice. Flipping over. Yeah, the ejection pin marks are on the inside of the, the halves that you won't see, so that's a good thing. Although that hatch, this hatch here has no detail on the other side and it's festooned with uh, ejection pins. So are these little slit hatches as well. They're raised though, so that's easy to carve away. And then we've got, these look like the specific parts for the breeder. Breda, I don't know how you pronounce it. So you've got the uh, the, the revised front of the turret there, the rotating thing here, the gun itself is, there we are, you can see that, it's slide moulded, written in two parts. Looks okay, it looks like there's a bit of flat, yeah there is, this flash at the end of that barrel, so it's not, not perfect, but easy to fix I guess. We've got two more large sprues to go I think, we'll keep going. Okay, we've got a nice big open, wow, what's that? That's... That's done really, really well. This this hose here, it's got really nice ribbed texture. You can hear my finger going over that. That's that's beautiful detail. That would be done in um, some sort of rubber hose or something in a small scale. Again, showing that the larger larger than one thirty fifth makes sense. The uh, class for the for the axe are molded on, and they're really, really lovely. They're really good. Um, these remind me of the Renault FT. These suspension springs. They're a bit meh. Yeah, with a big mold seam line running through at least one side, if you can see that, that's uh, that's not too good. Hopefully that can be hidden, I hope. Yeah, perhaps. <laughs> and then they give you the original um, machine guns that are on the 7.92mm, I think they are, that were on the original Panzer 1. So 
So the details are pretty good. I mean, you know, out of the box, that's pretty good. Uh, you can't really complain too much about it. just just a few little mold mold problems. We've got some slide molding here on these headlights, and I think that's the original uh, turret part where the, the machine guns went through, which you won't be using. All right, what have I got left? I've got left this fellow. And that is the hull. Let's measure it. We'll take the turret out. The hull is... I don't know how long that is. That's 25 centimetres long. So it's quite big for what is the smallest tank the German Nazis used in World War II. The Panzer One. But in 116 scale, it fits in your hand. It's a really good... in both hands, so it's really good. Made by Tacom. Looking around the details, okay. Raised bolts here everywhere. You've got weld seam lines along the edges. Uh, there aren't any nasty when they usually do a one piece model like this. Yeah, here it is, right there. So there's one there and one there. They're just a raised connection point to the sprue, and there's a bit of scratching as well underneath. Uh, it adds to the authenticity, don't worry about it. <laughs> and more dog hair from Penny. Yep, there's some really lovely, I don't know if I can get that correctly, the weld seam's just there. So yeah, a lot of nice quality there. I'm going to look at the turret next and we might zoom in. So here's the Stormtrooper helmet. I mean, here's the turret for the um, the, the breeder conversion. And as you can see, there's a there's a weld line going all the way around there where they've obviously added the extra, extra height. And they do mention in the instructions that you can paint this part here a different shade. So I'd you know, give it a filter or two to show that this was actually an, an add-on to the original. And yeah, like the other parts, apart from what looks like a parting line there, which is a bit strange, it's a mould seam. Okay, there's a mould seam running down the, the edge of the turret there. There we go. Not hard to remove because it's all flat. But yeah, the lack of, of surface texture, of armour texture, it's smooth as a, a baboon's bottom, as I like to say. I would add some, I would add that, but you've got to be real careful adding it because you'll, you'll lose all this beautiful detail, these these screw heads and so forth. So, hmm. While we're zoomed in here, I've got a few more little parts to look at and then we'll wrap it up. Uh, so that looks like another, that looks like the engine deck actually. And um, my eyes deceive me, but I can see a little bit of texture on that. Armour texture that is. That's interesting. Why isn't it on everywhere else? Hmm. And a bit of flash. So that's just a one piece that came, came in the kit like that. And then we get to the workable tracks. So let's have a close look at the tracks and the pin, the pins. Yeah, the tracks are okay. They're um, very not, everything's all, oh, there we go, because they've, they're slide molded. The, the tracks, so those holes look like you don't need to drill them through. Ha ha, let's have a look, see if it actually works later on. Um, yeah, I'm not sure those guide horns are supposed to be hollow. Hmm, because they're not, they're not drilled out. So that's an interesting thing to, to think of. Uh, and yeah, you've got, three attachment points to clean up on every track, which isn't too bad, and they'll all be hidden anyway. The pins, the pins look pretty good. The pins, yeah, the attachment point, there's no way around it. You have to put the attachment point on the tip of them, so I would use a very sharp cutter there to, uh, not all the way up to, to the pin itself, just cut a little bit away, and then just very carefully sand that back to get that nice smooth finish. Very simple photo wet sheet, and yeah, it's just the, um, these are just the exhaust covers, very simple to do, and I won't take them out of the bag so they don't get scratched. We just got the headlight covers, the headlights. Decals. Before we go on with anything else, let's have a look at the decals. They are very nicely printed, and apart from the, the number ones up here where we've got a lot of carrier film, you can see that there in the glare, around the numbers, uh, everything else, the other white parts, uh, have got minimal carrier film, and they're very thin. I can, I can barely feel them on the... Um, on the sheet, they don't look too bad. All these red and, and the Spanish colours, however, I would consider masking those because because then you've got the opportunity to chip them. But yeah, overall, they shouldn't be too bad. They're, they're, there's nothing to say who they're made by except for by ammo themselves. So, hmm, jury's out on those ones. Let's look at the instructions. Instructions. First of all, when I opened this up, I was immediately reminded of our old, now defunct wingnut wings. These have, um, it's in that sort of territory of, of high quality, glossy, beautifully printed instructions. Uh, you get a, a detailed description at the front of their use during the, during the Civil War. And then you get these lovely reference photos in, in relatively high resolution, you know, for what you can get at the time. Um, 
Yeah, really well done. Like Wind Nut Wings does that with their with their World War One subjects. They put photographs of, of the detail parts and, and the overall parts next to the um, to every component of the instruction. So this is really really well done by Mig I, I, by Ammo. I, I got to applaud them for that. They've instead of the usual. Um, <laughs> so this is a bit more illustrative. The how to assemble your kit. Well, I hope you know how to do that. And then of course you've got the first of many ads in the to buy ammo, ammo, ammo products, and read this, you know, don't don't glue things to your ear and so forth. You get a nice parts map layout. Uh, they don't shade out the parts that you don't use, and I have already seen a few of them for the original Panzer one. And then we move into the instructions. I might do step by step with these ones because it's it's a, it's a very simple build. It's you know it's a box, casemate goes on top, turret goes on there, the wheels, what there's four wheels. Four main wheels, a sprocket and an idler, you know, very simple sort of stuff. I have built a Tacon 116 tank at before, I will show it to you shortly. They go together very, very well, not hard to do at all. And again, another plus to the whole, you know, why a larger scale, why anything larger than 135th is makes sense. So going forward with this, you've got uh, a few points where you've got to add some rivets. To the uh, to those sway bars, I think they're called on the suspension. Very easy to do. Just a sharp knife, and there's some rivets there on sprue D. Nice and clear instructions. Can't really fault that. You can fault the way that they tell you to do it. Like you know, get this tow rope on the front here, make all the all the tracks, and then put the top on. You know, I wouldn't I wouldn't be doing in that sequence. There's 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 if you're an experienced armor modeler, you know not to follow these instructions by the letter. They don't make sense. What you want to do is you want to do this first, or you want to make make your tracks, get them to fit, take them apart, and then put put all these the major parts on. Then add the, the more delicate pieces thereafter. Okay, so top goes on. Build your turret, which is specific for the the breeder with the the big the big cannon. Chuck it on, and you're done. Now this is really interesting. This is um, again down to I'm not criticizing. I'm not uh, destructively criticizing uh, ammo for doing this. You know, it's well done for them to bring people into the hobby and explain things a bit better. But they uh, they give you recommendations. I'm just going to zoom in here a little bit. Hang on. So what they do, they give you at the back of the instructions uh, how to weather it, which is really interesting. They show you know the the nine the nine layers because weathering is all about adding layers of products and techniques to your model using a Sherman tank here. That's great, and that gives a beginner or a, um, you know, a, someone who wants to get a bit more deeper into weathering their tank, you know, more confidence. Oh, that's how you do it, you know, step by step, instead of, you know, going and buying all the MIG ammo books and weathering magazines and so forth. How to place decals using American Stars and Bars for some reason. Add, add, add. <laughs> And then we get to the lovely call out. So they give you four in total. Now here's an interesting thing. Again, I'm gonna, you know, light tap on the wrist for MIG. You know, all the color call outs are their products, nothing else, okay? But at least they tell you, they give, they give you all the colors here at once and it's color coded, unlike some other um, call outs where they don't even show the color next to the color they're saying. But they also give you all the weathering products to use, the ones they recommend for that particular vehicle. Now they're not the exact ones. If you've got other products, what do you do? Well, you can, you know, if you ask around, you should be able to work it out. And um, you know, some of these, some of these ones are RLM numbers, so RLM seventy nine. You can get that in any, any Tamiya, MRP, any other sort of uh, products, Hataka, all that sort of stuff. So that's not a problem. So looking through this, you've got you know quite distinctive vehicles. I go to the next one here. You know, some with different turret tops and different markings. And the camouflage pattern does change from vehicle to vehicle. They're not all the same. It'll be interesting to see if someone comes out with a masking solution for that. There's that one with the big white X on the front hull and the big stripes on the back. So, yeah, this is one of the big pluses of this kit, and this is the reason why I got it, and the reason I want to build it is this is a this is not Panzer Grey. <laughs> it's not you know Panzer Grey and a little and maybe they used um the Germans used a two tone. They had. Uh, Panzer Grain Brown, whereas this is at least three colours and they got really, really dusty there in Spain. So closing it up and we get a nice revolutionary poster at the back. So yeah, can't really fault those instructions apart from, you know, the, the ads all throughout and finding the ammo equivalent paints. So uh, yeah, let's move on. 
I want to talk about 116 scale just for a moment before we move on. And here's Tacom's other recent release, the Type 94 tankette, the Japanese Army one. And I've built it up already. And it's a beautiful little kit. And emphasis on the little. Okay. In comparison to the Panzer one, it's a little bit smaller, not by much. But it's got that really nice three-dimensional box size feel. I mean, like, it's it's really tall. It's It's got a lot of detail going on, even though it's a small vehicle. And, yeah, it works. It just works for this scale. Now, can you imagine this in 135th scale? It, it, it would just be tiny. It would probably, probably fit, you know, within the palm of my hand without touching my fingers. It's just, you know, and there's... For, for a lot of builders, especially those of us getting on in age, you know, mid-40s plus, having something of this sort of size doesn't take up a lot of room in the cabinet. And it's it's a great subject choice. Let's compare it, however, to a Tiger tank. This is a 116 scale Tiger turret. Now, can you see the Type 94? <laughs> yeah, there's the barrel. I mean, th this, this is my Tiger one. This is a Hobby Boss version, which I've been very slowly converting into an early early version of a Tiger tank for about, what, four years now? It's just such a huge project. It's so big and, uh, yeah, one day I'll finish it, but, you know, compare it to something like this, where 116 scale, it makes sense. It makes sense for tankettes, for things like a Jeep, Kubelwagen, Schwimmwagen, and in fact, Tacom, they've really cornered this part of the market. They, they, the first one they came out with was the Renault FT, the or FT-17, which was the first, I'll put some pictures up here if I can. That's the first modern tank, you know, with a uh, driver at the front, engine at the rear, rotating turret, the whole lot used in World War One. It's a tankette, however. It's small. It's only about that big. And Tacon made one with a full interior. I've got it. It's it's sitting in the stash there. I can't wait to build it. And again, it's only going to have a footprint like that. Now, I have built the Renault FT 172 scale. I'll put a picture up there of the ones I've done. And again, you can fit them. They're like this big. Okay? Now, to me, 135th scale doesn't make sense as an intermediate, as a jump up. Because I'll just take this away. You'll see this in a moment. It does work for big things. Let's have a look at this. Okay, this is a M6 that I built. It's a the American heavy tank that they never. That, I don't think they put that into a service. I just built it as a what if. What if they actually did? You know, and that's quite big. Like I said, the two hand rule. It fits in both my hands. But this is a massive tank. You know, it's it's bigger than a Tiger tank, and that's the only reason that 135th really makes sense is for the, the huge ones like a Char 2C. The um, yeah, this M6, a Pershing, or a King Tiger, or a Mouse. But really, we should be looking at a slightly bigger bigger platform than that. And it should be about 124th scale. You know, the car guys, I think they've got it right in the first place. So anyway, let's go from there and discuss the pros and cons of the original thing, the Breeder. Where's that gone? Here it is. Let's wrap this up. Okay, in conclusion, what are my thoughts on this? Well, let's go over the bad points first. There's no interior. Okay, and for for a vehicle this size, it would be it would be lovely to have an interior. And like I said, they did make Tacom did do the Renault FT with a full interior, and all the hatches here are poseable, and some of the hatches have internal detail, some don't. So it would be lovely to have an, uh, an interior, but that would probably bump up the price, which then leads me to the price. <laughs> it's not a cheap kit. I think this costs uh, it's about a hundred Australian dollars more or less, maybe a bit more. Uh, I don't know what the equivalent are around the world, but it's not cheap. It's, but you know, for what you get, like I said, that, that platform for what you get and for the painting and weathering, something to consider. Uh, the next thing, it's a minor thing <laughs> and I'm, I'm needling ammo about it, but there are ads throughout this entire thing about use this product, which happens to be ammo, use that product, which happens to be ammo. And that's okay. That's fine. But then it leads to the call outs at the end where it's only, you know, they only give you their colors, their weathering products. So takes a little bit of sleuthing, you know, a couple of hours on the internet going, all right, well, what, what color can I use for my paints or what paints can I get that match that if I can't get the, or I don't want to get the ammo paints. Uh, a couple of minor things with how the, the sprues are done and the molding quality. There is some flash, as I pointed out in the sprue tour. There are some minor mold flaws here and there that need to be addressed with a sharp knife. It's just a little bit of care and detail. I had that, uh, one of those, um, I think it was for the idler sprocket or something. Uh, one of the, the rings had broken already, you know, it's just got to be, take a bit of care there. And yeah, lastly, and this would take a bit more, um, bit more research, but I'm struck by the lack of texture. And in fact, the Type 94 tank had that as well. Look, 
um, armor armor steel plate has texture in it it's not plastic so if you want and particularly at this scale 116 you need to be able to replicate that it needs pits and it needs little scratches and scar marks and and um, uh, cut cut lines through that and so forth there is well detail and it's nicely done but yeah that's that's the last sort of con I'll give the kit but moving to the pros and the reason why I think you should get this is because this is a great subject it's such a rare subject but it's like I said it's different from you know it's a German tank and oh my god have we got enough German tanks to do on the market but you know it's a different take it's it's uh, unique the colors and the weathering opportunities particularly in this size a fantastic you know great opportunity there uh, the instructions are like wing nut wings and are really pleasurable to read and to go through I really enjoyed that I haven't built this but I know having built the, the type 94 over here you know and and all the reviews I've seen of how it builds up uh, it should work really really well tack on a kind of like the Tamiya 116 small stuff now so yeah I can't can't really fault that and when it comes to the detail it's sufficient it's good enough okay there's I'm sure there's going to be photo etch sets and resin sets coming out to replace some of the details and you might want to replace some of the grab handles with wire and you might want to super detail bits here and there but hey out of the box really well done all right there we have it ammo's tacons panzer one breeder breeder I don't know how to pronounce it apologies to the uh, the Spaniards out there and uh, yeah, I recommend this kit and I can't wait to get started on it, but I need to paint that other Japanese tank first and I need to do that big bloody tiger tank over there as well. So <laughs> stay tuned. Hope you enjoyed that and you know what to do, blah, 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 like, subscribe, hit the bell, all so on and so forth. I'm going to try to do a review once a week if I can, because uh, I really enjoy going through the, the kits that I know I'm going to build and the good ones like this. So yeah, stay tuned for the next one and I'll see you later. Cheers.